everyone. I just wanted to do a short review on the Hamilton Museum of Steam and Technology. Located in East Hamilton, there's the address for your devices. As you can see, it's close to the Queen Elizabeth Way, so easy to get to from outside of Hamilton. And for residents of the city of Hamilton, you can currently use your Hamilton Library card to have free admission to the walking tour, which is about one hour long. And if it's your first time visiting the lower building, which is the boiler house portion of the facility, you can see the walkway up to the uh, second door from the right is where you enter. And you'll enter into the large boiler house room. And when you enter, you spin around and you can actually see the doors from the inside and the columns to each side have chains and pulleys. So these doors can actually, uh, well, at least three of them can still go up and down according to the tour guide. So they're still operational. They were meant to bring in coal into the uh, boiler house or boiler room. So they're very large doors that go up and down on chains and pulleys. So there you can see the main room of the boiler house. To the left is a type of little gift shop and that's where you would check in for your tour and a lot of information on the walls. So nice uh, little gift items and books. A nice little assortment of um, kind of technology toys and having to do with steam and water and uh, technology. So yeah, kind of an interesting little selection. There's their bulletin board showing uh, upcoming events. And as you can see, they have train days, which I think is five times a year in the warmer months, where they have miniature trains running in the back. But I'll mention that a little bit further on. There you can see the original tin roof. So uh, really well preserved, original beams. So this was uh, quite a large room uh, because you had the large boiler in it as well. So, And there you can see the original architect contracted by the city of Hamilton to create the Hamilton Waterworks is what it was formerly called. So there's a map, uh, early map of the city of Hamilton. And it's an interesting map because it shows you where the reservoir is uh, halfway up the mountain, about 180 feet above sea level, that they would pump the water to to gravity feed the rest of the city from that pump house. There you can see some filtering basins. So they would filter lake water through sand into channels that would run up to the, uh, the pump house. And at the start of the tour, they run little steam engines for you. So to demonstrate what the boiler would do, it would be running uh, uh, steam towards the steam engines, and that would in turn run the pumps. So they give you several examples, and it's very interesting to watch. They also have really good diagrams of the actual boiler room, how it was kind of back in the day, and you, know, you can see them feeding coal into this uh, large burner and boiler. And they also have a diagram of the water being drawn from the lake through a sand uh, berm or basin and uh, then through a channel into the pump house, pumping up to that reservoir halfway up the mountain and then feeding the, uh, the city, which only had about uh, 14,000 residents at the time. And the city of Hamilton was growing quite a bit and uh, were plagued by some waterborne diseases such as cholera. And I think uh, over 500 people in 1854 died from a cholera outbreak. So the city was looking to uh, extract some lake water and pump it up to a reservoir. So they need this pump house to do that. So there you can see some uh, clay pipes and uh, a lot of cast iron pipes were used to get the water from the pump house up to that reservoir. But they show you how, uh, how the pipes were constructed and what were used in water mains. Very interesting. And when you first enter the pump house itself, you'll see the lines feeding the steam engines from the boiler room. And the tour guide said because of the unique design, they actually built you know, the steam engines and, and a lot of the, the moving parts were built on site and assembled uh, while the building was being erected. So here you see some of the steam engines from Dundas at the time. There was a firm and you'll see coming up a, a plaque on the side of each engine. Uh, that it was a local design and uh, they were very proud of it. That's why you see a lot of brass and lots of plaques. So uh, it was very, uh, very proud uh, achievement for the city of Hamilton and for the designers and engineers. There you can see uh, Mr. McFarland. He lived on site. He was in charge of the facility for uh, pretty much the entire 51 years. And he, he had a family and a son named Blair, who apparently, according to the tour guide, used to play in the area. and. He did a little bit of graffiti uh, just above his work desk, so he left his name. And there you can see the big, uh, there's two giant flywheels 
and a lot of Romanesque uh, Italianate uh, influences. So you'll see the big columns that look uh, very much like Roman columns. And here are the tour guides just uh, demonstrating how they could actually start the flywheel just by moving it slowly and then eventually it would start going on its own. But these flywheels had to be assembled on site. They were so big and heavy. Because I did ask him how how would you even get all this inside the building or but he said here you could see a dovetail uh, connection. Uh, they would assemble it in pieces and put it together and it would all be done on site. So very impressive. They actually do run the, uh, they use an electric motor and a, and kind of a rubber tire that runs the, the big flywheels. Um, he said it wasn't operating at the current time of this video because the tire was flat. So they were having a problem with uh, running, but it actually does run. If you're lucky enough to be on the tour, they can actually run it for you and, and everything is operating to this day. So it's uh, very well preserved. It did have a restoration a few years ago and it's really in, in tip top shape. And there's the firm in Dundas that built the steam engines that run the pumps. Again, a lot of brass and a lot of pride in, in the workmanship. And you can see examples and diagrams of a walking beam type of uh, mechanism that was used to pump that water up to uh, 180 feet up from uh, from sea level pretty much uh, halfway up the mountain or the escarpment so yeah a really interesting facility very thick walls stone um, it's a great example of a kind of the industrial revolution and and all the accomplishments back then so I encourage you to check out this tour and the tour guides are very knowledgeable and um, they will explain anything that if you just ask them if you have a question about how it operated or even uh, how the working conditions were back then it's very fascinating to see uh, all these moving parts especially when it's operating but it, like i said it wasn't this time but this setup did run from 1859 to 1910 so yeah good 51 years of service and then they converted uh, everything to electric in a separate uh, building. So this was all preserved by the city and the workers. Out back they have um, a field with uh, train tracks, so like a whole uh, series of outbuildings with uh, miniature trains. So that's another thing to check out during the summer. I think five times a year they have train days. And this is the uh, the building just behind. Again, 1913 they, they built this and they used electric pumps so they have uh, special events, um, activities for kids. I'm not too sure when they run, but uh, I just took a peek in the window. And there you can see they do have quite a few activities uh, uh, planned once in a while. And this is when you first come in, you see the coal shed or the wood shed, they call it, I believe. Um, and that's where all the, uh, obviously the combustible materials were kept. But very impressive, um, you know, 1850s uh, style structure. And um, like I said, a, a great example of uh, achievement back then. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the tour. It wasn't very long, but uh, I hope you got a kind of a quick glimpse of what you can expect. I encourage you to check it out. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and bye for now.